What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Thank you again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. So today what we're going to be talking about is the Canon EOS R6. This is my full frame mirrorless camera and I absolutely love it to death. So what we're going to be covering today is seven tips and tricks, so to say, on usage and different little quirks and features, if you will, of the R6, what I like about it, and just how different things I've learned along during my time, so to say, of using the camera on a fairly regular basis. Tip number one, and that is gonna be the custom controls and the customizability, customization options on this camera, right? So on the R6, you got your adjustment right here. Let me turn this off. You got your adjustment right here. You have, let me turn it around. You have a adjustment wheel right here. And then you've got another adjuster right here. Now with those three things, you can customize whatever you want them to do. Uh, there's also a control ring on the front. This isn't the L series lens of the kit lens, but you can still put it on control and use the control ring up front to do whatever you want it to do, you know? So with me, I prefer to have my shutter speed up here. I know a lot of people chose to have like aperture right there, but I prefer to have shutter speed. So I have my shutter speed right there. I have my aperture on the little thumb dial right here on the top. And then on the ring on the back, I have my ISO right there. Um, I, I know some people choose to put their white balance selector on one of those. I am not one of them. I shoot in auto white balance, but I also shoot in raw. So anything I don't like, I can just go back and change later. Uh, but yeah, the custom controls right there. You can also change literally any button you want. So. Uh, all the buttons on the back right here, you can change what they do, how they do it, so on and so forth. There is a bunch of customization options that you can just tailor to make the camera how you want it. You know, how I shoot and how I want my buttons set up is not going to be the same for how everyone else wants their buttons set up. So definitely go in there. If you are trying to change something like that, when you open the menu and you go to the one, two, three, four, five, sixth menu. It's a little camera with some lines below it. And then you go to menu number three. So orange menu, tab three. You can change all your customization things right there. Tip number two, and that is gonna be back button autofocus. And I don't think a lot of people use this. When are the other photographers that I've met, um, maybe it's because we're all amateurish level. I haven't met any real true professional photographers before. And I don't meet many people that use back button focus, but since I started using it, I have not stopped whatsoever. Um, I did leave the shutter button, like a half press to still autofocus, depending on what I'm doing. Plus if like my wife is using the camera, that's just how she knows how to do it. Um, but on the back, you have a little button that says AF on. And when you push that button, it auto focuses and it is amazing. I just, I just like it. I find myself being able to, you know, cause I shoot in servo as I'm assuming most people do like 98% of the time. And you know, I just hold that down and it's just good. I just find it easier and more efficient, so to say, to shoot that way. So tip number two, back button focus. Tip number three, and this one is very helpful depending on if there's like certain things in the menu tab that you choose to do a lot, and that is gonna be customizing your tabs, all right? So when you open your menu once again, and you go to the last menu, the green one, it has a little star, right? There is a thing that says add my menu tabs. So different settings and stuff that I like to change a lot when I'm taking photos, I have in a photo tab different settings I use when I'm doing stuff with video, I have in a video tab. So if I'm trying to like format a card or something, I don't have to go through all the little menus and whatnot and find the format button. I can just boom, menu, the save tab, whatever you wanna call it. And then my format option is right there. So setting up your menus, how you want them is just a lot like setting up the dials. It'll help a lot and just keep everything a lot simpler. All right, tip number four, and this is gonna be auto tracking the eyes. So whenever I shoot, I like to have a point autofocus, right? Uh, to be specific, I have the one, it's a square with the little squares around it. That's normally what I shoot in because I do a lot of street style stuff. Um, if I'm doing portraiture, or 
anything like that or just some more detailed stuff and I want that little tiny single point, I'll change it to that. But for most of the time I have it with that square with the dots around it, right? But I wanna be able to access my eye autofocus without changing my autofocus system quickly. So the way I have it set up, if you go to your menu tab, once again, the orange menu, tab three, and you go to customize buttons, I have the star button on the back of the R6, so right here. I don't know if you can see that, I'll give it like a little close-up thing. Um, I have that set to IAF, and the icon is a little eyeball with an AF symbol next to it. So now when I'm shooting, I can have that point autofocus on my screen, and if someone's coming in frame or something and I want, I want to catch their eye, right, I can just push that button and it'll flip straight to IAF and it'll track their eyes. And as soon as I let go of it, it'll go back to my point system. I really like that feature. I like that Canon kept that in there. I don't know if older cameras have that kind of stuff, but uh, this one does and it is helpful. It's really helpful. Say you're taking street photography, something like that, right? And you're trying to, you're just trying to get this scene, but boom, someone's coming in frame. You're like, that would be a good shot. Hold that button down real quick. It'll track their eyes. And then boom, you can go back to whatever you're doing. Now, tip number five, that is gonna be to disable continuous autofocus. All right, now, all it does is really drain battery. You know, if you have video on, it's gonna do its autofocus thing. It's gonna rack autofocus on its own anyway. So having continuous autofocus on is kind of pointless. So what continuous autofocus is, my camera's on right now. So if continuous autofocus was on, it would focus on whatever's over there. If I turn it this way, it would automatically focus on whatever's over there, and I don't need that. I'll focus the camera when I want it focused. So to turn that off, if you would like to do that, open the menu tab, go to tab two, the AF section, it is the magenta, fuchsia, if you will, maybe. Menu tab one, it says continuous autofocus. Just change that to disable and it will save your battery. You'll thank me later. All right, now the next one's not so much camera related, but more so with the lenses. And that is gonna be to don't underestimate this kit lens. The 24 to 105, this is the non-L version too. This is the, what is it? It's like four point something to 7.1. Yeah, four to 7.1. Don't underestimate this lens. That's a little underdog right there. That lens is not expensive and it doesn't cost a lot to add it whenever you get the kit as opposed to just getting the body. Um, but it is definitely a good lens. You know, it's a very versatile lens. If say you're going on vacation, that's gonna cover almost everything you need to do right there unless you're trying to do some really cool looking stuff. But in that case, you know, you can just bring other lenses with you. The 24 to 105 though, I would definitely recommend it. I have heard the non-L version, or the L version is a lot better, obviously. So if you could get that one, you know, it probably wouldn't be the worst idea. Um, this one, the focus ring and the control ring are the same. So when you get the L version, it's a little bit longer and you get a dedicated control ring on there. Sounds like kind of clicky, sounds pretty cool. But yeah, I, I've done a lot of stuff with this lens, you know, I'll, uh, and based off my experience with it, I like it a lot. I've never had any issues with it. Um, if it was a lower aperture, that would be really nice, but you can get this lens for like 300 bucks and it's a pretty long, wide focal range. So, uh, you know, you gotta take what you can get. Overall though, I like it. And then tip number seven, the final one, and that is gonna be, you can still use all your EF lenses if you have them on your R series bodies. Now this goes for the R6, RP, R, R5, and the R5C, the new one, right? You can put an adapter, an EF to RF adapter, on your camera and you can attach your old EF lenses, say you have a lot of glass from prior systems that you don't want to get rid of and you're kind of hesitant on moving up to something like this maybe, you can still attach all of those to the body and they'll still work fine. The autofocus works, everything's good. Um, I've heard a lot of great things about the Canon brand ones. I have not looked into the third party options like Viltrox and stuff like that, but I have heard good things about it. I haven't really seen any issues just from other people's experiences, but I have not tested it on my own. So to do with that what you will. But yeah, you can still use your old glass. And guys, that's gonna be it. Really quick, uh, this video shouldn't have been too long. 
Canon R6, I love it. Love it to death. If you have any questions about it, anything I didn't mention, you know, go ahead and feel free to drop that down in the comments below. Um, do you use an R6? Do you use a different R body? Let me know what you're shooting with. As always, my Instagram and my Twitter will be linked in the description below if you wanna keep more up to date with what I'm doing. You wanna see the photography and the pictures I'm putting out there. Instagram and Twitter are gonna be great places to do it. And yeah, drop a comment on uh, one of my Instagram posts. Say you're coming from YouTube so I know who you are. And guys, like I said, that is gonna go ahead and wrap this one up for today. If you liked what you saw, you enjoy this kind of content, drop a like on this video. It does help a lot, I promise. I really appreciate it. It helps YouTube push the videos out there to newer people. That way everyone, everyone can enjoy the goodness. So like the videos, comment, share, you know, do all that stuff. Subscribe if you are new and you wanna come back to see more. I wanna see you again. Come on, you know you wanna see me again. You wanna see this again at least. Come on, yeah, you know. But yeah, guys. Until next time, I'll catch you later. Peace.